Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. In this video, we're going to be looking at Paper 2 from the CIE ICT IGCC course. So Paper 2 is a practical paper which is 2 hours and 30 minutes long. We're going to be doing a May-June 2019 paper version 21. So in this particular video, we're going to be doing data manipulation, which is databases, and we're going to be using Microsoft Access. So in the previous video, I've started this paper. So we started the evidence document and we completed the word part of this paper. So let's go down to page six, task three databases. Okay. You're now going to prepare some reports. Make sure all currency values display the same currency and are set to two decimal places. So they're not being specific which currency to use as long as you use the same one. So before we start the database task, let's go to our source folder and let's make a new database file. So if I right click my mouse, go to new and select Microsoft Access Database or you can just open up database from your start bar. Uh, let's call it 2019 S21. So it's a summer 21 paper and open up Access. Okay, once Access is open, using a suitable database package, we're going to be importing this file here. So j21books.csv. So this should be in our source folder. So it's going to be this file here. If you want to have a quick look at the CSV, you can do before you import. So let's have a look at what sort of information do we have. So each row is a record. The first row would be the field headings. Okay. Um, so we've got lots of books in our databases and we have lots of different pieces of information for the books. Okay, uh, let's close this down because we're about to import. We don't want to save any changes. Um, so it's useful if you want to have a look at the data before you import it. It's not really um, important, it's up to you. So we're going to have these different field names. We're going to have these different data types. Um, let's import the data first, okay? So depending on which version of Access you have, mine's a little bit different. Um, for me to import, I need to click on New Data Source, From File, and then click on Text File. Uh, you can also click on External Data and Text File. is normally the option around here on other versions of Access. So let's click on Text File. And I'm going to click on Browse. I'm going to quickly pause this video whilst I find a location of the CSV file. Okay, so I found the location of the file. So this is a file which we need to import. So j219books.csv. Let's click on open. So remember, before you import, make sure the files are not open. Let's click OK. Next. The first row contains fields um, headings or field names. And then we click on advance. Check to see if the data is in the right format, so it should be day, month and year. When you get to this point here, let's check if we have any boolean fields, yes or no fields. Okay, I don't see any boolean fields. And now what we're going to do is double check the uh, data types. Um, so the first two should be text. Yeah. The book reference will be a number, which is correct. The next three should also be text. Yeah, then we've got two integers. Okay, uh, let's see. Then for these two fields, it says it's double. Okay, and we're going to leave it as double. Double basically is a decimal number. We don't want to set it as an integer, a whole number. We want to leave it as double. And later on, we can change the formatting in the design view to currency. Then we've got text and then date and time. Yep, so we've got binding text and date with time. That's fine, we don't need to change anything at this point. Let's click on next, next. Do we have a primary key? Yep, so we're going to set book ref, short for reference, as the primary key. So the primary key is normally the unique field for each record. So we can choose our own primary key. And we're going to choose a book ref, okay, this field here. Next, finish close let's have a look at the data so the first row are field names uh, these two fields we need to set to currency 
And remember, any time we have currency, we need to set it at two decimal places, which is normally the default. Okay, so let's go and change that then to so home design view. So this here, leave it as double because we want to keep the decimal places. You can see here the decimal values. Okay, and change format to currency. Okay, same for here currency and if we leave the decimal places as auto two decimal places will be shown as default so can you see we use both uh, or both fields have now been formatted as currency as pounds sign has been shown here so it's a British currency um, and both fields have two decimal places okay so that's fine the next thing which we need to change is the date format so we need to show the medium date format Okay, so if we go back to here, you can see the date is shown like this 0206 uh, 2011. We need to show June as um, J U N, so the short or the medium format, should I say. So let's click on date and time, format, medium, date. And uh, yeah, you can see now that's the correct format of the date. Yep, the three M's, this is medium. And obviously we have the example here, if you want to check, yep, that looks fine. So save the data, and we're now going to be moving on to the first evidence of this part of the paper. So place in your evidence document, a screenshot showing the field names and date types used in the table. So if we go to design view, okay, let's take a print screen. And let's go to the evidence document and paste in. Crop off the parts which are not necessary. And then we can increase the size. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a, uh, another a screenshot. Um, let's go on these fields here. Just to show the format of these uh, fields here. And I just want to crop off and only want to show this particular part. Okay, and I think, yeah, I'm happy with that. So you can see the currency format has been applied. If you wanted to take this screenshot as well, uh, I suppose we can. So we might as well uh, not take any chances. Okay, so. Again, um, I've said in previous videos, if you want to use a snipping tool for this task, you can do. It's whatever you find easier to use and whatever you're comfortable using at this point. Uh, zoom. Okay, that's fine. Okay, save the changes. Let me just zoom in to each page. So make sure your print screens are nice and clear so it's easy for the examiner to see what you've been doing. Okay, so that's that done. Evidence 6 is finished. There was two marks there. I looked at the marks and that's why I decided I wanted to take the extra screenshots. Right, now we're going to be importing the next file, j219genre.csv, as a new table into your database. Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to open a file in this um, example, so let's just import it straight in. So if I go to external data, new data source from file, text file, browse so it should be in the same folder yep here we are okay next you can see the first row of field names so we can tick that and um, we've got three fields and it looks like it's all going to be text yeah uh, let me just see the question we're going to set class code as a primary key so if we keep going forward Choose me on. Yep, class code is a primary key. Finish. Yep, since it's all text, we don't need to change any of the um, data types. Uh, now we need to create a one to many relationship between the class code in the genre table and a class code in the books table. Okay. So before we create the relationship, we can close down both tables, go to database tools, relationships. And we're going to add 
both tables. Okay. And what we normally do, we normally link the primary key first and we drag it onto the foreign key. So both the fields are going to be called class code, but we start the primary key linking it to this foreign key here. Okay, and let me double check. Yep, so we then need to take um, screenshots showing the relationship between the two tables. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on create and then I'm going to click on this, double click on this line. So we see the relationship, we see this box here, it's going to be a one to many relationship. Okay. So for one genre, for example, it could be drama or comedy or action. It could be many books. So that's what that means. Let me take the print screen. And this is for evidence seven. Let's go down. Let's paste the print screen. Okay. Um, crop and let's save the changes. So here we've got uh, in one print screen we've got this the two tables and also this box here. So in the mark scheme this box is coming up more often now so it's best to have both this and this uh, as part of your print screen. Okay so that's that done. We can close that down, press OK, close, save the changes. If you open up the genre, you can see um, this one's not got any. Yeah, for this one here for crime, we've got all these books linked to this particular record here. So one record which is linked to many books. Okay, we can close them tables down. For question 23, we're going to create a columnar data entry form using the fields from the books table. Okay, so to create a data entry form, you go to create um, form wizard, and we want to use the fields from, fields from the books table. Okay, include only the fields the book reference class code. Title imprint. Publisher date binding volume and ASP. Next, yep, it's going to be in a column format. Next, and we need to include a suitable form title in a large underlined font. So Let's just type in a suitable title, books. Entry form. And finish. Okay, so we have a suitable title, but we need to format the title. So let's go to design view. Let's click on the title, highlight it, and you can go to home. Make it bold, make it underlined, and uh, make it much bigger. So let's increase the size of this box. Decrease this box here. And I want to make it black as well. No, not to fill. Uh, let me get rid of that. Uh, it's the colour of the text I wanted to change. There we go. Right, let's see if there's anything else we should be doing to this form. Okay, that's that done. Make sure the layout has, layout has consistent alignment and spacing. So right now you can see this is right aligned, left aligned, right aligned. So what we can do is, uh, if, if I click here and press control, we can select all of these fields here. And we can go to home and we can go to left alignment. If we go to view, we can see now it's left aligned. And all field names and data are fully visible, uh, which it is. The spacing, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to make this a little bit more consistent. Uh, so let's go to design view. 
Okay, these boxes here, I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. These ones are going to make them all the same size. Let's go to view. Yep, so these are the same size and the smaller ones are the same size as well. So it's, now it's looking more consistent and all of the information is fitting into the boxes. Right. Okay, so that was three marks for the data entry form. Okay, I'm just looking ahead. Right, so using the form created in step 23, which was the previous question, um, so use the form created in step 23 to enter the following details as a new record. Now, what you can do if you want to add a new record, you can click on here to add a new record, or you can create a button to add a new record. It's up to you. Um, I'll quickly show you how to make the button just so if you know for the future. So if you click on to go to design view, click on this icon here. Let's draw your button out and we can click on record operations, add new record. Show the text rather than the icon because it's going to be easier to see. Next and finish. OK, um, I'm going to quickly show you how to create the buttons to go backwards and forwards. So for this paper, it's not necessary to make the buttons, but if you do need to make the buttons for future reference, this is how you do it. Uh, so it's going to go to the first record, show the picture instead this time. Um, it doesn't take long to make these buttons. Uh, go to the last record, next, next, finish. Go to the previous one, next, next, finish. Go to the next record, next, next, and finish. So let me just label these buttons or move these buttons. There you go. Like I said, in this paper, it's not necessary to make these buttons. I've just done it to show you in case you may need to do it in the future. So now what we're going to do is save the changes, click on add record. And Obviously in the exam you'd have to type this information in. I'm quite lucky I can copy and paste. So make sure you type it in exactly as it appears on a question paper. So Friday nights. Almost done. Let me just get the rest of the information in. Right, and the last one, five twenty nine. Let's save the changes. Okay, and we can close this form. Actually, before we close the form, um, we need to take a print screen. So check your data entry for errors. Mine should be fine since I, since I copied and pasted. Make sure all the data is fully visible. Save the data, which we've just done. And then place in your evidence document a screenshot showing this data in your form. So this is now evidence eight. Um, let's paste it in again nice clear screenshots okay it's no point making it too small where the examiner can't read the information um, I've just noticed this last field is highlighted and it's not going to be clear for the examiner to see so let me deselect it print screen it again and again we're going to crop off the part which is not necessary we have a nice clear title the spacing is nice and consistent. The alignment is all to the left. Yeah, okay, that's not fitting on that page, so let me move this down. Okay. So can we see all of the information? Yes, we can. We can save the changes. And evidence eight is complete. Done.
Okay, so before we move on to question 25, I want to check if this data here in the data entry form appears in the table. So let me just save the changes. Let me go to the books table. It should be at the very bottom. Yeah, so Friday nights. Obviously, we didn't include all of the information, so that's fine. We can save the changes and we can close any tables down. Okay. So now here's a tricky part, according to some, um, creating the report. So you'll notice I've already annotated the question. Um, before we can make the report, we basically need to create a query, which is going to filter the data. As you can see, just let me go back to the books table again. In total, we have uh, over 2,000 books in our database. And if you don't filter the data when it comes to printing, you're going to be printing lots and lots of pages. So obviously, we want to avoid doing that. We need to learn how to do things properly. So you'll notice I've annotated a question. So the query always goes before the report. The first thing we do in a query is to select the fields and then to name the query. If you look at the other question as well, Q1, we select the fields and then we name the query. I've already annotated the search criteria, which will be um, done in the query for here as well. Okay, so for both question 25 and question 26, or 20, yeah, this is 25 and 27, we're basically going to be taking very similar steps, okay, to complete this. So using fields from both tables to produce a tabular report, okay? So we're not going to start from here. We need to find the first part of the query, and that's where we select the fields. So let's go to access. We need to go to create query wizard. And let's see what fields we need to use. And be careful. I've just realized in a previous video, um, I think the February, March 2019 video, I forgot to include a field. So I'm going to be extra careful now in which fields I include. So I'm going to do two at a time. So title and imprint. Okay. This, these two fields now, so pub date and binding. And do it in the same order as the question paper shows. Volume ASP. And sales value. But this is the, the field that we're going to be creating later on. So we're not going to do sales value for now. Um, we need to make sure the fields are in this order, displayed in full, and we do not group the data. And this is something I'll come to later in the report wizard. Next, next. And when you get to this part here, always include a title that's going to be appearing at the top of your report. So let me copy and paste. And make sure you make no spelling mistakes. You include capital letters when shown. Finish. And if you check, there's over 2,000 records. At this point now, we're going to be entering the search criteria. So if we go to design view, title includes the text night. So actually, let me go back to normal view. So here we have lots of different words, okay, and we want to find any text in this field that contains night. So to do that, we need to put star, night, and star. This will find anything that contains night. The mistake some people will make is you simply type in night here and it's nothing that only is night. So we basically want to find something that's going to be containing night. So you type in star or the asterisk, night and star again. Yep, so night could be at the end of the, of the title. It could be part of a word, okay? So anything that contains night. So we're now down to 58 records. The next thing we need to search for, the volume is more than 6,000. So we need to use the greater than sign and then type in 6,000. So the volume is going to be this field here. Uh, let's type in greater than sign, 6,000. And let's click on run. Yep, that's all 6,000 or above. We're now down to 50 records. And imprint does not include proton. So, not proton. There's two ways of doing this. We can type in um, like this, not proton. Let me double check the spelling of that. Yeah. 
and now we're down to 42 records and you can see there's no proton in there or you, what you could have done is typed like this so less than more than and then proton it does the same thing basically so it's useful to know the sign because you may need to use it in, in Excel for your spreadsheet formulas yep same we're still down to 42 let's save the changes okay and we've now completed this part okay so let me highlight the parts which we completed and we've completed this okay we've completed this right so now we're going to create the new field and this is the last part of the query so the new field is going to be called sales value so to create a new field we need to go back to design view we come to the end here and we're going to enter the new field here so the new field is called sales capital S underscore value capital V so we need to write that first of all sales value followed by a colon so that's the name of your new field okay let's read the question so which is calculated at runtime and displayed with the same currency formatting as RRP and ASP which was the British pound this field will multiply the volume so you know this is a field because this text is italic by the ASP field so basically we're going to be multiplying these two fields together because we're using fields we need to put them into square brackets as you can see here so volume is in square brackets multiplied by ASP so what I'm going to do let me just copy and paste this now just to save myself a bit of time Oops. Um, paste it in if I go to run so sales value is basically these two multiplied with each other we need to change the currency so it matches up um, with the currency shown here so not change the currency apply the currency so if we click on a field and go to property sheet we can click on format currency go to run and the currency has been applied same as this and to do two decimal places so that's the query part done and now we're going to be moving on to the report task okay so this is the difficult part the report task is quite easy now so let's save the changes and what we can do is go to create report wizard so we want to use this query here select all, select all the fields now we've created sales values so this is also included next next and we got sort um, we're going to sort the data into ascending order binding so binding is going to be ascending and then descending order volume so we can click here to change that next is it going to be landscape it's going to be landscape yeah Yeah, landscape is here and the title still there from the query so we don't need to do anything again finish okay so let's save the changes now since we've done a sort on these two fields it's messed up the order so the first thing I'm going to do is put this back into the right order so if I close and go to design view so this is design view let's go to instead to layout view to fix the order so what I'm going to do, I'm going to press control on the keyboard to select the field name and the data and we're going to move this information across and the first field we should have, let's go back to here, it should be title and imprint so it's going to be here Oops. I'm going to move this data across here I'm going to make it small for now and then we'll make space in a second um, And what we'll do, I'm going to move this across here. So I just want to create space for, for myself. So we need to make sure all of the data is shown in full. Okay, so let's go down and see. Yep, anything cut off? Yep, this one here, can you see? So that's why it's really important to go down and check all of your records 
Yeah, that's that done. Let's do imprint now. That's fine. So what comes after imprint? Um, these two fields, pub date and binding. So again, actually let me move this across here. I'm going to make it really small for now. The hashtags basically means um, the data is not shown, which we know because we've just made the field size smaller. Let me move this one here. Okay, so after pub date was a volume, so pub date binding. Okay, so binding is now in the right place. Okay, I've just lost some of my fields. Let me press Control Z, go backwards. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just move these ones across here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, and make sure nothing's overlapping. There we go. So, that's done. Binding and then um, volume ASP. Yep, yeah, everything's in the right order now. So let's go down and check if everything is shown in full. Yeah, so there's a little bit of messing around there to sort out the order. Um, okay, I'm happy with that. Let's save the changes. So the data is now ascended. Uh, it's landscape. Fits on a single page wide. Uh, let me explain what that means. So if I go to... Actually, if we go to uh, home, print preview, you can see all of the data fits one page across, okay? And obviously we do have a second page. Now the mistake some people will make is if you go to design view, and if I just increase the size of this like this and have this overlapping like this, and then if I go to print preview, so home, you see it's not fitting in one page wide and some of that will come on a second page so that's what that basically means you need to make it fit one page going across so let me move these two back to where they were and uh, let's decrease the size of the page and we go back to print preview if it's one page going across all of the data is shown in full we've used the same currency um, yeah that's looking good to me. Um, now we need to make sure your name, center number and candidate number is in the footer of the report so it displays on every page in the footer. So what we need to do is we need to have the name on every page so we go close the design um, print preview and we need to insert our name in a page footer, not in the report footer, if you included it in the report footer your name would only be on the last page so we want your name on every page we need to insert a label and we can just write a name here in the middle so there's nothing about alignment uh, so name center number so I can use five six seven eight and then from a candidate number I use one two three four obviously in the exam you will be given the information so that's what you need to use so for now that's what I'll use Okay, and I think we've finished the first query and report task. So before you print, again, you can go to the print preview. And let me zoom out. See, my name is here at the bottom. All of the data is shown in full. Check the order of the fields. Um, as I've said before, if you do print out and you do realize you have made a mistake, you can always print again. So if you want to print, you can click on this icon and that's good to go now. Okay, so let's save the changes. Close that down. So remember, before we get to the report, you have to create a query. You select the fields. You enter your search criteria. If I didn't have a search criteria, any search criteria, for the report, you'd have hundreds of pages. Obviously, we don't want to be sending so many pages to the printer. Okay, so that's that question done. Question 26, now we're going to be exporting the report created in step 25, which was the previous question, in RTF format. 
save the exported file in your work area and then what we need to do for evidence 9 is to take a screenshot to show the exported file saved in your work area. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click, export as a Word RTF file, which is a rich text format. And we can save it into our same folder in this format here. Save. Okay. And yeah, so there's our saved file. And then let me take a print screen of this. Place in the evidence document a screenshot to show the exported file saved in your work area. And make sure there's evidence of a file type. So the file type, I hope, was shown as well. Yeah, which text format? Yeah. So let me put this into my evidence document. And again, increase the size of your print screens. There's the exported file, and there's the format of the file. Save your changes. Okay, and that's that question done. Okay, so let's now go down to question 27. So it's going to be another query and report task. As you can see, I've annotated the question again. We start the query, we select the fields, we name the query. We enter the search criteria and then we go to the report. Okay, so let's create a new query wizard. Okay, and we need to select fields from both tables, okay, to produce a tabular report. So this step is really important. You're selecting fields from the tables only, not the previous query, because we need to use all of the records. So what's the first thing we need to do? We need to show only the fields title and author. So title, author, binding, book genre. Binding, I think, yeah, book genre. So I need to go to the different tables to get the different fields and rank in this order. So let's go back to the first table, next, next, and again, same thing we did previously, Q2 would be to select the title, make sure you enter it exactly as it appears on the question paper, um, it saves us doing it later if you do it now, and it's also easier to identify your query and your report if it has the same name. Right, finish. Again, we're going to be starting off with 2000 plus records we need to enter the search criteria. So the book genre is going to be children or young adult. So if you're searching for multiple values, you can use or. If you wanted to search for something different, you can have another or and search for a different genre. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just simply copy and paste this to save myself a bit of time. So the book genre, if you go to here, so it's going to be children or young adult. If you click away, you'll see the speech marks automatically appear. Go to run. Let's check the genre out. So it should be children or young adult. And now we're down to 589 records. Okay, the rank is going to be 400 or less. So it's going to be less than or equal to 400. So we can go back to here. Less than or equal to 400. That basically means it can be 400 or less. Okay, and um, we're down to 62 records, and yeah, I don't see anything greater than 400, so that's fine. And the binding is paperback. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this, Control C, paperback. Okay, what we could have done had here is this field shown as paperback, is it yes or no? So it could have been a boolean field, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We're now down to 28 records, and did you see what I did? I was basically searching for one field, one at a time, and checking to see if it was correct. So let me double check if they're all paperback. Yes, they are. The genre is children or young adult. The rank is less than 400. Uh, is there anything else left to do in a query? No, I think we've done the query. So that was quite quick, actually. Now we're going to make the report wizard. So 
save the changes, go to uh, create report wizard, select all of the fields, next, 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 and uh, let's do your sort. Sort the data in, in ascending order of rank. To keep as it is. It's going to be portrait, the page orientation, so we keep it as it is. Uh, I need to enter the title again. Um, so it's fine, we can just copy and paste it. Let me just delete this so I can get to that text. Okay, and then finish. So when you get to here, click close print preview. Go to layout view. Since we've done the sort on the rank, goes from lowest to the highest, we need to put the fields back in the right order. So the rank was the last field. So this one will be should be easier to do compared to the last one. Um, so if we go to home, layout view. Are we already? Yeah, we're already in layout view actually. And let's move this all the way across. Okay. And the reason that's not shown is because it's overlapped by the book genre. So we can okay start sorting out the fields now. So if I press Control to select the data as well as the title, we can change the title and the data at the same time. So we need to make sure the data is fitting. Uh, go down and double check. Yep. Now we can go to the author. Check the data is fitting. Yes, it is. And this should be more easier. Should be easier to fix this one compared to the last one we did. Okay. Done. Save the changes. So we've done the sort as portrait fits on a single page. Um, we've got the text. Now it says here calculate the total number of books in the selection and position this number under the binding column. So where's the binding column here? So we could basically, that basically means count the number of records. We can count any of these fields. Since it's going to be underneath this particular field, we can select this field to count. And then if we go to design, totals, and we want to count the records. Um, we've got 28 records. Okay, so that's that done. Now we need to have a label that says number of books to the left of this value. So if you go to design view, um, we can go to design, we can add a label by clicking on this icon here to the left, make a box, and then enter the text shown. So number of books. Okay, and you go to print preview or normal preview. Yeah, so the label is to the left of this number here, so that's fine. Has your name, centre number, candidate number on the report? It doesn't say where, so you can stick it anywhere you want. Uh, so let's get that done. Um, I'm going to put my name at the top. It's only if you go to print preview. There's only one page, so, whoops, let me go back to print preview. So there's only one page, so it doesn't really matter if it's in a report header, page header, report footer, or, you know, as long as you've got your name on there somewhere. So I'm going to put my name here. So, five, six, seven, eight for my center number, one, two, three, four for my candidate number. Okay, is that done? So print out free. Let's go to print preview again. So before you print out, check to see the fields in the right order. All of the data is shown. There's the name of the new field. This is not underneath the binding column, not directly. So I'm going to change that slightly. So let me go go down here. Go to layout view. 
one to move it so yeah yeah I'm happy that you wanted it so now we can send this to the printer like I said in previous examples videos um, if you're not happy with your printout you're welcome to print again in the exam right evidence 10 we're going to place in the evidence document a screenshot showing the database formula used to calculate the number of books so what you need to do is go to your design view and I'm just going to increase the size and we basically need to put this into our evidence document so I'll take your screenshot this is evidence uh, 10 again crop off the part which is not necessary if you want to use snipping tool as mentioned you're welcome to use whatever method you find easier to use or whichever method you're more familiar with using okay done save right and we're coming to the end of this section so question 28 we need to recommend two changes that could be made to improve the efficiency and use of your database and justify your choices so if I close down this now the first thing I did I, I didn't have to do was to add navigation buttons to my drop-down or data entry form and that's made it easier to navigate between the different records if you want to go to the first record or to a last record or to add a new record you can click on this button here so that's going to be the first thing I'm going to type here um, so add in navigation in the data entry form and the reason I can just type in reason it makes it easier to navigate through the records okay we could have also added a drop down menu um, which I didn't do but I'm going to write that down as well so add in a drop down menu and reason it will be quicker to enter data into your database so rather than um, typing you can select options from the menu you could have also said things like we could have data validation which restricts you from entering any incorrect data so there's lots of different things you could have said um, to improve the database um, we could have had shorter field names so if we uh, go back to the database and we could have, okay we could have you know made these a little bit shorter if we wanted to um, that could have been a um, you know c underscore c for example or this could have been you know just uh, you know just initials if you wanted to but i think let's just stick with what i've said um here so adding navigation buttons and adding drop down menus would have been the best thing we could have done for our data entry form to make it easier to navigate between the records and to have a drop down menu would have allowed us to add data much quicker into the database and obviously if you are selecting by a drop down menu it's less chance of making a spelling mistake right so we've come to the end of this section here i hope this video is useful please like and share this video drop your comments below and good luck in your exams